What up, you guys? We are here for our midweek alchemy message uh, using the Wild Unknown Alchemy Oracle and the Mystical Moments Tarot. We're just taking a look at the process and the approach to our weekly spiritual lessons. And if you're curious about those, I would suggest you watch our uh, two videos ago that was released on Monday, which is our anchor message for the week. So we've got darkening, followed by mercury, followed by breath. Underneath darkening, we've got Ten of Wands, Underneath Mercury, we've got Judgment. And underneath Breath, we've got the Star. Awesome. So this is an acknowledgement to maybe some of the difficulty and turbulence that's been in the air this week, but it is a positive message and it is assurance that everything is happening for the highest good. So darkening, although it can look looming, is actually a good card. This is a sign that we are willing to go into the depths rather than continue to scratch at the surface, right? This darkening is like the deepening of pigment in the process of alchemy. When you're working with the materials and the materials, the color, the color is darkening. It's getting deeper and richer. And so this is like our willingness to go deeper than surface level, right? To look beyond what we're seeing, what the illusion is projecting to us, what the simulation is projecting. Like I like to pretend that life is like a video game and it is projecting the level of like the circumstances of the level are projecting what we need to like expand our character on the journey through the game, right? And so it's really easy to just look at the circumstances that are going on and take them at face value. Oh, this is difficult. This is hard. This is why this is happening and, and this and that. And instead of saying, okay, pause, what a pleasure. This is happening for me to realize something and it's an opportunity to take something within myself and transmute it. This is an opportunity for me to see the darkness in myself that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to see unless it was shown to me and I could go deeper, deeper than appearances, deeper than surface level, deeper than getting caught up in the situation and instead going inward and looking for ways that this could be helping us improve and to reveal more of the light of our soul and to actually transform the ego shells that shroud that light. Paired with the Ten of Wands, this is a confirmation that this is an opportunity, whatever's happening, to break long-held cycles that are holding us back and break things that have been self-defeating, right? That have given us more difficulty than, than we need. And so this is like the Ten of Wands is like patterns that have left us exhausted or situations that are that we're, we're like giving our energy to, but it's not it's like wasting our energy rather than helping. And so for this reading, I really would urge you not to look at outer circumstances and conditions, but to go deep within. It's not like the circumstance is only showing you what you need because you need a mirror to be able to see fully something that you haven't been able to see in yourself that needs to change in order for you to like step into your next level, right? And so this could be a perception that we've had or negative tendencies or just general negativity. It can be a habit or like self-defeatism or an addiction. Whatever it is, it's like what, what we're going through now, it's like we're like, this is too much to keep doing. This is too heavy of a burden to keep bearing. I can't keep taking this on and I can't keep like tolerating this behavior in myself anymore, 
right? So I need to change. I need to do something about this. And so that deepening, the, the darkness here is actually something that's churning up inside of you things. And this is actually a level of achievement within the, the laboratory of the alchemist. It's not so much a warning or um, an ominous like uh, announcement. It's just, it's acknowledgement for continuing to like own the work and go deeper into it rather than bypass and stay up in the lighter, you know, surface area. So with Mercury here, this is communication. This is messages. This is like, sometimes we, we can look at Mercury and it's mercurial, right? It changes, it can be tricky. And this can be a trick, right? And so think about the ego. The ego is constantly trying to trick us and it's constantly trying to dissuade us from seeing what needs to be seen just to protect itself. So it's like, we're, we're looking beyond the trickery of the ego we're looking beyond the surface and it's because there's been some some kind of wake up call, right? Judgment is like a level of awakening and revelation where you're like, oh, okay, this is a moment of like push come to shove. Like this is the wake up call that we've needed to be able to see something clearly or to be finally like done with a habit or whatever it is. So there may be a, maybe have been a message or communication that has helped you see something that otherwise maybe you wouldn't have seen. You know, maybe it's something that was jolting or difficult or, or hard to comprehend at first. Maybe you couldn't have seen it without yourself, without someone else giving you this message or without a situation that was showing you like circumstances in your life, you know, that were as a result of maybe your approach. So it's it's good, it's a wake up call that's giving us enlightenment that's gonna help us get past these ego tricks to keep us in this same, same mindset, in the same consciousness, right? And that consciousness and that mindset and that perception informs our thoughts, our moods, our feelings, our actions. So this is something that like this week when we like look at the astrologers and we listen to the things that they're telling us, it can be a tumultuous week, but it's ultimately here for our highest good. And so, so many times the judgment card is like rebirth, renewal, um, reconciliation. So this can be an opportunity to reconcile the things within us that have been perpetuating difficulty and uh and negative patterns we have breath here with the star so it's like don't like give it some room to breathe breathe literally <sighs> like try to do breathing exercises if you can try to get into um, a meditative state a restful state a pensive state when i see this card it reminds me of four of swords which is give it a rest Lay down, chill, think about things, meditate, breathe, give it, give the situation space to breathe because it can be healed. It can be, you know, changed. It can be transformed. The star card is all about healing, hope, transformation, right? But it's at the other side of a dark period. And so don't, don't um, panic and give up on yourself or try to avoid or shut down. Instead, just give yourself room to breathe and to be able to show up and really be present in the moment to really take in all that you can from it because ultimately it's here to help you. And ultimately the star card is not just about healing, but it's also about achieving our goals and long held dreams. So it's very likely that this pattern is related to the success or like block of what we what what our heart's deepest desire is. And so many times we are taken through difficulty or the thing that we want is being held just out of reach because the creator knows that if we have that thing, we will be too satisfied to break the dark shells that need to be broken in order to get that next level of our soul, in order to go to that next level. 
in order to change our consciousness. Sometimes it's like we have that thing, that dangling carrot that is a motivating factor, right? And if we have everything that we want and we're satiated, we're not as motivated to do the inner work, to do the hard stuff. Because why would we do the hard stuff when we can, you know, enjoy the party, right? So it's, it's like this is a good moment, even though it may be uncomfortable, it is an opportunity that can lead to deep change within you, deep and lasting change, hopefully. All right, you guys, I hope this serves you well. If you enjoy this reading and other readings, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And let me know in the comments, like what is resonating, what might be happening in your life. And it, even if it's just, you know, oh yeah, it's been tough. Uh, this is, <laughs> this helps to hear that I'm not alone or it helps to, feel like I'm not being punished by the universe, but I'm trying to be helped along, right? It's sort of like in the 80s, in the 90s, the parents back then were very haphazard. And sometimes in order to teach their kids to swim, they would just throw them in the water and let them figure it out, right? Which sounds harsh, sounds scary, but they wanted their children to be able to learn to swim so that they would not drown when they weren't being observed. So the parent is sitting there looking at the child and they're there, you know, they're, they're there to make sure that no ultimate danger happens, but it's also like a scary situation that feels like not too great at the time. They do this with babies. They teach little babies, infants, how to swim by literally throwing them into the pool. It seems insane, but instinctually the baby knows what to do when tossed into the situation. But what do we know about babies? They have a pure consciousness. They don't have limiting beliefs. They don't have those fears yet that are ingrained. They don't have um, the uh, self-limiting beliefs or the subconscious assumptions or, or um, subconscious blocks that we have that we develop over time through experiences that that make us feel frightened and that build in like self-defense mechanisms so think about that having that the purity of mind of a baby and and the purity of trust to to trust the instincts in in that from that purest place right there's like different kinds of instincts that we have some of our instincts have been tainted, right? And some of our instincts come from an animal impulse of survival, right? And those are the instincts that we want to rise above. But we also have our higher instincts coming from the, the influence of the higher self and the soul and the Holy Spirit speaking to us through the channel of our spirit. And so it's having to learn to decipher which instincts are the ones that you should be leaning into. And so I think that's what this week is all about. It's trying to show us how the animal instincts are, are causing a block from our higher instincts to come through and lead. All right, I hope that y'all have a good rest of your week. Good luck out there. And tomorrow we'll be back for our weekly romance oracle reading. Ciao. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, then please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, turn on notifications to be notified of when I drop content. Like the videos, comment, share them. Anything that you do helps these messages get out to other people who need them. So you watching a video and taking an action on it actually makes a positive difference in someone else's life.